In August 2021, I made a video about the sobering findings of the IPCC's Physical Science Working Group, which documented the widespread, rapid and intensifying changes occurring in our climate system. For the first time, those scientists emphasised that climate change is unequivocally linked to human activity, and the findings were accompanied, for a while at least, by increased calls for action from across society and in the media. The latest instalment of Humanity's report card on climate change is out now. This time it's from scientists working on the human and biological impacts of climate change. It spells out how those physical changes to our climate system will affect us all, and in some ways that makes this one far more scary. In this video I'm just going to pull out some of the headline findings and point to what they might mean for the cryosphere. There is so much to be concerned about in this report, but we also have to remember that although the window of opportunity for action is narrowing, it is still there. And we still just about have time to dramatically upscale our ambition to tackle climate change and save lives. We know that climate change is driving widespread loss and damages to natural and human systems. 40% of the world's population, and that's 3.3 billion people, are highly vulnerable to climate change impacts like extreme weather events, displacement and food or water insecurity. This report notes that these impacts may actually be worse than previously feared and will hit those who depend most strongly on the natural environment hardest, and that includes indigenous peoples and already marginalised and vulnerable groups. So this isn't just a climate issue, it's a justice issue too. Climate impacts are scary and wide-ranging, and to be honest, it would probably be quicker to list the areas that climate change doesn't touch. Climate change will worsen human health, it will compromise water availability, jeopardise biodiversity, agricultural productivity, food security, political stability, economic growth and culture, and will likely displace millions of people with the potential to even exacerbate existing conflict and tensions. Climate impacts don't happen in isolation either. They can compound and add up to trigger cascades of effects or even tipping points, like the loss of the West Antarctic ice sheet or Arctic permafrost thaw. And those are things beyond which there is no return. When many impacts stack up, they can produce negative consequences that are greater than the sum of their parts. So for example, sea level rise leads to a chain of losses that includes damage to coastal ecosystems, degradation of fresh water supplies and coastal infrastructure, and then the many associated impacts on food security, livelihoods, culture, health and well-being for people living in these regions. And that is a lot of people. These damages can be compounded again when you add on top of the rising sea level heavier rain, higher storm surges and greater flooding related to storms. The irreversibility of many of these changes is another thing to take from this report. Some human and natural systems are being pushed beyond the hard limits of their ability to adapt. Once mountain glaciers have melted, they aren't going to return in a hurry, with consequences for the billions of people who depend on glacial meltwater for their water supplies. Similarly, once Arctic permafrost has thawed, it will change Arctic ecosystems irreversibly, and with it the lives and livelihoods of the millions of indigenous people who live on and with the land in the northern polar regions. One thing the report highlights is that the choices made now are critical for the future of our ocean and cryosphere. The longer we wait to act, the more devastating the impacts of climate change on natural and human systems will become. We can improve people's lives to some degree by adapting to these changes, and lots of people are already working on this. But adaptation can only get us so far and is currently woefully underfunded. The only way to avoid the worst effects of climate change is to aggressively cut emissions. With current policies and pledges, the world is on course to see around two and a half degrees of warming by the end of the century, which is quite frankly a death sentence for many human, biological and physical systems. 
Many impacts, including the loss of coral reefs and the destruction of many polar environments, are irreversible beyond one and a half degrees of warming, which is why so many vulnerable nations have repeatedly pushed for this threshold to be enshrined in international climate policy. The crux is that both mitigation via rapid emissions reductions and adaptation are required if we are to avoid some of the most devastating impacts of climate change. It's quite rare for scientists to be so vocal about the need for action, which says a lot about the urgency of this problem. They note that timely, ambitious and coordinated action to address unprecedented and enduring changes in the ocean and cryosphere are required and that any further delay in concerted anticipatory global action on adaptation and mitigation will miss a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. We cannot let that window close on the world's most vulnerable people. It's going to take action from all of us, and that includes you and it includes me. If you found this video helpful, you might like to check out some of the other videos on YouTube about this recent report. And I'll put a link to a playlist put together by Climate Adam in the description, where you can also find the link to the IPCC report in full, and also to my Patreon page, where you can subscribe to support me to make more content like this. Thanks for watching.